everyone. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Fox West Texas Sports Unscripted. I'm your host, Casey Busher, now joined by NFL Network's Lindsay Rhodes. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining me. No problem. Happy to be here. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen you. I guess it's been almost a year. Uh, I got to do a little virtual chat with you with Olivia Stomsky at Syracuse, and you were fantastic and taught so much uh, to so much about the industry to a lot of people in the class. So I appreciate you doing that back then, but excited to talk to you right now too. Yeah, thank you so much. That was fun. Olivia is amazing. She is the best. She is the best. But speak, it's been such a crazy time. There's no sports, but for you as an anchor in the sports industry, I mean, how, how has this time affected you? Well, um, since we're not in studio, it's affected me pretty dramatically. I'm not really uh, doing the show right now. So, um, home homeschooling <laughs> and uh trying to figure out what comes next just like I think a lot of us yeah yeah it's crazy and I mean I guess we don't really even know like NFL season could potentially be delayed or no fans it just it just is a lot of unknown right now but just getting into your journey I mean you we talked last year a little bit about this but you started in a smaller market, but you're from California and you went to USC. Um, but when you went to Washington, how did that time for you as a reporter help you grow in the industry and get better with reps? But also, how did it help you grow as a, as a person to move to a place where you weren't really familiar with? Yeah, I think both are really important. From a professional standpoint, I think it was massively important for uh, my career arc be, just because when you go to a small market, um, you get a chance to do everything. So it, it's, you do a story or a couple of stories every day. And then the next day you're right back at it again and you're doing another story and then another story the next day and then another story the next day, there's no lull in between your work. So the, um, the, the time of you getting better is just, it's dramatic. And it's, um, you can see a difference really, really quickly just because you're getting the reps in. And this is a business that's all about reps. You just have to do it and do it and do it and do it and do it. And then you realize that you're not thinking about things that you used to think a lot about. And you're just kind of like things become second nature. And so the reps that come along with a small market job are huge. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the fact that you and a, lot of instances have to do everything. You know, you're shooting your own video, you're writing your own stories, you're stacking the broadcast. Mm -hmm. If you're the sports anchor like I was, then you're coming up with uh, like opening in the morning paper and saying, what is going to be in the sports cast today? There's nobody there standing over your shoulder saying, here are the events you're going to cover. You have to decide what's important enough to fit within the window of time that you have. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes that's a high school soccer game or a, a highlight of an NBA broadcast or, you know, game that your region is interested in and trying to figure out what makes the most sense to a lot certain times too and things like that and then putting it in the rundown. So you're your producer, you're your editor, you're your camera person, and then almost last you're the person that's on camera at the end of the day presenting to everybody mm -hmm. so i think it's important too to just keep everything in perspective like it's the process that actually is important and if you are really involved in the process of putting together the broadcast then at the end of the day when you're presenting the broadcast all of that involvement level helps you get better at the presentation of it which is the only thing that a lot of people will even notice and then you'll get an email at the end of the day from somebody who says that they liked your hair yeah. or something like that and you're like that was like the 500th thing on my list of things to do today but yes great i'm glad you liked it not the other way around that's but personally um it was really really hard and that's the thing that i i i know is the biggest challenge for people who are trying to get into this industry i talked to a lot of people who just don't want to leave. You know, you have family, you have friends. Sometimes you have a boyfriend in college or a girlfriend in college or something like that. And you just kind of, it's hard to just cut free of everything that you're familiar with and move to some random town with no guarantee that there's a specific out date. You know, it's not like, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to do this for six months and then I'm going to come home. It's not like that. It's, yeah. I'm going to pack up, I'm going to go wherever I have to go to get an opportunity. And I have no guarantee that I won't be there for years or 
that after I'm there for a couple of years, I won't go to some other random town for a couple of years. So you just have to be willing to kind of chase this thing wherever it goes. And for me, luckily, that ended up leading leading back home eventually. But but yeah. personally, that's a that's a massive challenge, and it kind of forces you to grow up pretty fast and and figure out how to do a lot of things that you haven't had to do in the past on your own. And mm -hmm. it's a, an important time in my life. It was. So for you during that time period, were you just like eyes on the prize? I got to go where I have to go to get the reps. And cause not everyone does that. Some people yeah. get lucky and they get to regional network after school or something like that. But I mean, obviously it paid off in the end. Um, but during that time, I mean, how did, how did you just get up and go? Well, so I had actually been interning at a regional network in Los Angeles. I had been working at Fox Sports West, which was at the time I think called like Prime Ticket or Prime Sports, or it's gone through a bunch of different name iterations. But um, I had interned there and then that had led to a production assistant job. And then I was working as a stage manager and a timeout coordinator, all these different things all the way through college. Mm -hmm. And um, and at the end, I kind of thought like, maybe I can just transition into something here. Maybe I don't have to go do small market stuff. Um, because Fox Sports West at the time, they had a high school show, they had high school broadcasts that they were doing. They had a USC sports magazine show where, uh, that's where I went to school. So I was like, I'm a perfect person to do a feature for it here or there, you know? And so I thought maybe I could do a feature here and then I could do a feature for the high school show and then I could do sideline for the high school and then I could just kind of get more reps that way. But the problem that I ran into and what I tell people, it, everybody's path is different. So for some people that will be the right step for them. But for me, what I found was that um, the reps were just too few and far between. I would do a feature, and then next month I would do another feature. And then maybe the next month I'd get to do two features, or, you know, and then every once in a while, like, uh, so you, the learning curve isn't as great. You know, you're just not like, you're like everything that you learn when you watch that feature back and you go, oh, this was good, that wasn't good, I need to work on my voice, I need to whatever. You just aren't doing it as frequently, so you just can't churn out the reps. And um, and I also did sideline on a high school football game here, and that was like a big break. Um, and it was live, and I'd never done anything live, and I was so nervous and did the best that I could. And at the end of the day, I was like, you know, in my car, just beating myself up, like it didn't, you know, there were certain things that you always want to do better. Mm -hmm. um, you're comparing yourself to everyone you've ever seen do sideline before uh, at the network level. Um, and so I was like, I know I'm not that right now. And I was just beating myself up about, about like, you know, every little thing that wasn't right. Um, but I also was like, you know what, though, it was my first time ever. And it was live. And it's all of these things. And like, considering that considering I just graduated from college and I just did a live broadcast in Los Angeles and like I think it was okay you know all things considered and then I got called into uh the the executive producer's office like next week and he was kind of a mentor of mine and he sat me down and he was like my neighbor came over and was like who was the girl on the sideline she was awful and I was like just crushed oh I, I i mean it was like everything i could do to not cry in the meeting and he was like maybe you should think about going into producing because i think you'd be a good producer and i was like didn't know what to do with it and i got in my car and then i did cry and then i was like maybe he's right maybe i should be a producer and then i was like the more i've seen but i was like it was my first thing i've ever done yeah. out of college that was live and i'm the first person in my class from college to have done anything even remotely close to this and you're already telling me to get out like you know what i mean like of course i'm not uh andrea kramer yet i'm right. not you know michelle tafoya like no i'm not but i was like I, there was something in my gut that knew that that was bad advice and that yeah. it was um the difference of like that just because i didn't have an experience didn't mean that i didn't have any potential mm -hmm. or talent or anything like that so uh, that taught me that going to a small market where they sort of understand that they're getting people that are coming fresh out of college. That's how the cycle goes. You graduate from college, you go to a small market. The small market is used to getting people who are right out of college. Mm -hmm. So they kind of know where you are and they know how to evaluate you better. 
And um, so I, that's when I was determined. I was like, this is a much better path for me because people's expectations will be appropriate. I'll get the reps in to get better. Mm -hmm. And um, then I'm comparing myself more to people who are at my level and not like, um, you know, with to a producer who's also producing Vin Scully on Dodgers and Chick Hearn on Lakers at the time. Like, yes, no, I'm not them. <laughs> so, so compared to them, yes, I am awful, but that's a comparative thing. So, I mean, that's just probably one example of a time where someone told you that you couldn't do something or, you know, no after no after no is basically what it takes to get to the level that you're at right now. So yeah. for you, I mean, you're in a smaller market, you go to Santa Barbara, um, and you really, you really do make like that perfect climb up to where you're at right now. I mean, how did you uh, get over just like tuning out the nose and just continuing to get better and focus on you during the entire process? Well, so it's funny because like on paper, it looks like it's the perfect climb because it was, you know, my first job was in Yakima Tri-Cities, which was, is like a smaller, you know, market. Um, and then it's a jump up to Santa Barbara and now I'm closer to home. And I thought when I got the job in Santa Barbara, I'm like, I can stay here until something in Los Angeles opens up because I'm close enough to Los Angeles that like, and this is a wonderful place to live and I like it. And I'll just sit here until the right thing comes along. But then our station in Santa Barbara was sold and it was bought by a different, uh, by an ownership group that owned another station in the market. So they, uh, they said, okay, we would like you to stay, but we want your contract to start over again. We're going to sign you to a fresh contract. So now we're starting at day one of a two or three year contract. I can't even remember at the time. And we need you to move from Santa Barbara to Santa Maria, which is an hour North and not close to Santa Barbara. And, um, so now I'm two hours out of LA mm -hmm. and I'm starting again. And I was like, I don't want to do that. So I kind of was like, you know what? I'm going to bet on myself and I'm going to say no. So I turned down the job opportunity and I left the station and I just moved back to Los Angeles and started sending out tapes and I didn't get anything. And by the way, I didn't get a first nibble for that Yakima job, the, the Washington job. Uh, I graduated in May and that was my first callback. And I sent out tapes to everywhere. I was like anywhere that has a job opportunity opening here's my VHS tape in the mail because it was that then um and I didn't get a call back until March of the next year so from May to March nothing not not a phone call nothing took the first job that I was offered so then Santa Barbara happens leave that think I'm doing great you know like I feel like I'm pretty good and I'm gonna get a job and it's gonna be fine and then I don't even remember how long it took a year a year and a half nothing like so did that and i was waitressing wow. in los angeles and then went back to the people that i knew at fox sports west and the contacts that i had made in my internship process and said like hey i'll i'll do anything can i do a feature on the high school show which again was what i was doing before i left and got all this great experience and uh i'll do a feature on the usc show whatever you want me to do i'll do and so i did I got in the door that way. Finally, they were like, okay, yes, we have an opening. Just, just not, not a job, but like you could do a feature. And then, you know, a month or two later, you can do another feature. And then I was at that point, totally overqualified for that. But I was like, I don't care. I just need to get in the door. I need to be doing this broadcasting and waitressing. Like I was a sports director, you know, a few months ago, I was calling the shots in Santa Barbara and now nothing. And so got back in the door that way. And then did a good job on the features there. And then when something did open up, that was a full-time job there, then that went to me because I was already there. So it looks like it's this, like, if you just go, Oh, Washington, Santa Barbara, Los Angeles, regional sports network, NFL network, that's it. Then it looks like it's this steady and great climb, mm -hmm. but there are so many different um, challenges in the midst of all of that and places where I really had to kind of just stick it out and trust in myself and figure that something was going to come through. Um, I don't know that the, the business has not been a linear one for me. It's mm -hmm. been challenge after challenge after challenge. And then like in each section, you're like, this is going great curveball. Then it's going great again, you know, but in my, that's how it goes. That's really interesting to hear. I actually didn't know that. So that's very encouraging to hear. And I'm sure that's very encouraging for any reporters that listen to this just to hear that because, you know, yeah, you so much look up at the, you know, the Lindsay Rhodes and uh, Andrea Kramers and see where they're at. And you're just like, man, 
how they get there, you know? But anyways, um, speaking of your journey, when you look back and you talk about all the, all the challenges along the way, what are you, does it make it more sweet and, uh, you know, special to you because you had all those bumps in the road to now be where you're at right now? Definitely. Uh, I'm so appreciative of everything that I have. And I think, you know, we've all heard stories or, or you, you know, different people, you'll witness people who are less appreciative of things and feel entitled to some of the perks that come along with it. Or there is no, there's been no point in any of this where I don't appreciate the fact that I have people that do my hair and makeup when I go into work, you know, like for the longest time I was doing this and that was not the case. I was doing my hair and makeup in the car before I would walk into Angel Stadium to do the Angels pregame show for Fox Sports West. So like, th that's nothing that I take for granted. Um, the, the fact that I get to, you know, like when I go to the Super Bowl that I've access to talk to the people that I do um, and to just be in the places that I am, there is no point where I'm like, yes, I am entitled to do this because I'm rad. You know, I'm like, this is amazing. And I'm so lucky that I get to do this. And I think that part, part of that comes from the fact that there were all of these curveballs along the way. And I feel like I worked for it, but I feel like I do, I, I, not that I just, not that anyone deserves to be there, but I feel like I've earned the right to be in those situations. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but I also realize how easily it could have gone any other way. And the fact that I worked for it makes me feel um, very, very uh, grateful and uh, makes it a, a lot more special, I think. You can't take any of that for granted. And as a woman in this industry, I'm sure there has been times where you've experienced, you know, challenges along the way. But um, I feel like, you know, as of right now, I mean, I'm only 23, but as of right now, I feel like there's more women in the industry now more than ever. And I think that's really special. And yes. Um, for people that like me, who is who, when I turn on TV, I always see a woman in this on sports now, and I think that's really special um, and very cool. But for you, I mean, what challenges did you face as a woman trying to break into this industry, and what ways have you seen it change? Well, um, twofold. So, just in terms of like seeing women around, there there were a lot less women around when I got in, and there were a lot less women that I could see doing some the things that I wanted to do. So um, I've said a million times, but like Hannah Storm being on the desk for the NBA on NBC was massive for me because she wasn't, there was nothing about her that felt like a token. You know what I mean? Like she wasn't the pretty girl that also was there. And then they kind of went back to the guys and the guys were having conversations. It felt like she was driving the conversation and she was a very respected member of the team. And that was what appealed to me. It wasn't like, I want to be on TV, like, mm -hmm. like whatever girl is on TV. Um, it felt like there was a specific role that she had that was what appealed to me. Um, but for the most part, there weren't a lot of women that were driving the bus, so to speak, from a studio standpoint or on the desk in, in a hosting role. Um, it was kind of like my dream job at that point. If they were like, what, you know, what do you want to do eventually? It was sideline on Monday night football. And it was, I think in retrospect, because that was like the biggest job that there was for a woman, you know? It wasn't like every job in sports is available to you, Lindsay, like just subtly, nobody specifically said that, but you just didn't see women doing all of the jobs. So it was sideline on Monday Night Football. And that was my goal for pretty far into my career until I actually had done so much sideline and then other jobs too that I went, I don't even like sideline as much as I like the other jobs. So I was like, why am I still thinking that that's my end goal? And I think it was just because that was where that was the, you know, the highest paid position for a female. That was the highest profile position for a female. It was like, that was the, you know, uh, end all be all. And I think now the cool thing is that now that there are women that do just everything, I mean, there are women that are hosting shows, there are women that are uh, analysts, there's, there are women like Mina Kimes, who I don't even know how to put her into a, I don't know how to label her, because she's not a host, and she's not really an analyst, she's just, like, she's 
I, I don't even want to say personality because it's such a, like she brings so much to the table that you could just, you could ask her a question. She could drive the conversation. She could do all of it. You know, she's just a person who is amazing at her job and there isn't really a specific label for it. And I think that's awesome for women that are coming into the industry right now, like yourself, that it's like, you could do a podcast, you could host a show, you could um, be one of the people that's answering the questions instead of just asking them. You could be an analyst if you wanna really dive deep and know your stuff. All of this is available to you and that wasn't really the case when I started. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk some draft coverage. Uh, so Dallas is two hours from, from where my uh, station's at. So any, anything that surprised you in the draft? About uh, well, uh, since we're talking about Dallas, yeah. uh, the fact that who you guys got was available, uh, I did not expect that. Under I did not expect CD Lamb to be on the table still. Yeah, no, it's 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 so big, and I think it's pretty cool. Uh, like I saw Jane Slater was just kind of keeping up with everything, and she's like, "Yeah, like they didn't even think that CD Lamb would be on the table. Didn't even think it was an option. Like he wasn't even on the list. They didn't even talk to him and." So that's a big deal for Dallas, for sure. I mean, we have so many wideouts now, but I'm not complaining. That's for sure. That's for sure. No, that's a lot of that's a lot of weaponry to deal with offensively. Yeah, and also just because this is such a crazy time right now. Whenever sports do come back, and hopefully NFL starts on time, uh, I'm sure multiple times in your career you've seen how much sports bring people together. But when that time comes and when people can watch football together again, what's that time going to be like? Do you think it's going to be, um, you know, more special because we have, we've been so long without sports now to be able to uh, watch games yeah, I think together? I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, so just uh, speaking in terms of my family, right? Like we're just uh, like, we can't wait for baseball or basketball to come back. I mean, just little things like I have a six-year-old uh, boy here at home and he's collecting baseball cards. And that's one of the things that we do for fun in quarantine is just go through the baseball cards and, you know, turn over the stats. And like, uh, my average is blah, blah, blah. Well, my average is blah, blah, blah. Well, my guy wins. So yeah. like, he's in that process where he's just learning and getting so excited about sports. And it's like, I just need a game to be on for him to watch so that we can go through this process together and um, kind of watch him fall in love with it. He's at that point. And so we're dying for something to come back like that. Um, and I think um, in a way where we'll appreciate it more once it's back. Like if, if, if it was just on and there's all this other stuff going on, then you kind of drop in on a game here or there or whatever. I don't know that I would necessarily appreciate what that moment does for, you know, a, a mother and a son or a father and a son and like how that bonds you, you 